something that I'm incredibly excited to finally talk to you about, which is For All Mankind. Uh, for anyone that's watching right now, For All Mankind airs uh, on Apple TV+. Plus. You can stream the entire first season right now. It is one of my favorite shows. I loved it. Um, and I know that you are currently in post or working on season two. Uh, but that's a little bit ahead. I want to jump backwards. For people that have never seen it, um, how have you described the, the series to people? Well, it's a, it's an alternate history uh, series, and it, you know, it starts with the premise of what would happen if the Russians had beat us to the moon in 1969, and that one event just changes the world. You know, because we lost the race to the moon, uh, the United States got really upset and just said, "What? How could this have happened?" And we're more than determined than ever to catch up to the Russians. So Nixon gets out of Vietnam early. We go all in on the space race. Uh, the Russians then put a woman on the moon, and the Americans go, well, that's crazy, where are our female astronauts? So suddenly, women come into the program, and social change starts happening. And, and basically, the, scope, the sweep of the series is saying, if we had really gone all in on the space program and moved more aggressively to the moon and to, and to the beyond, how would things have changed? Technological change happens faster in the United States. Societal change happens faster in the United States. And the idea is that this is a show that posits an alternate history that's better than ours, that turned out well, that it became a better country, a better world, you know, a better future for humanity. And it became, you know, it's, it's a more positive idea of what the future could be than what we had. And it's ultimately, this is like the road that leads you to a future like Star Trek, where it is an optimistic idea of, of what's possible, where technology, technology is our friend, where we did you know, go out into the planets and explore the solar system and created a better world because of the breakthroughs that the space program inspired and some of the literal breakthroughs that this program itself discovered. Uh I think Apple's done a tremendous job in terms of giving you a budget to work with to make this thing look spectacular. Um, this is not the budget of Battlestar Galactica. No. This is this is a whole different level. Um, can you sort of talk about working with Apple in terms of as a producer because you're one of their original shows? It's been great. You know, it's interesting. You know, I was there at the beginning. You know, the the saw the platform created. You know, the the beginning of the network and. The, the growing pains of that and the, the ideas of what it was going to be and then Apple as a, as a company getting into cre content creation for the first time really and you know the marriage of Cupertino and Hollywood and how that would go and it's, it's been fun it's been quite a ride it was really thrilling to, to do some of the things that we did and to it was great to be part of the first uh, slate of shows um, there was you know there were things like Tim Cook coming to the set and sitting at mission control and talking to him being really excited because we got the keyboards right and you know then really he and i geeking out on the mon monitors and just the fun of being in mission control and it was it was a kick you know it was it was really it was really cool to, to do that and uh they've been big fans of the show as you can imagine apple is obviously a, a filled with people who love technology and a lot of them grew up loving the space program and you walk through their offices and there's pictures of space and astronauts and spaceships all over the place and so they were big supporters of, of what we were doing and they love the fidelity with which we you know we did the show and how careful we were to really get the physics right and get the the details right about the period about the spacecraft about what happens in space about what being on the moon would really be like and you know our, our attention to detail was something they really valued i think uh it's funny you brought up tim cook um i've always said that when it comes to apple like a, a series on apple you need to find out if tim is watching just like you need to find out if jeff bezos is watching your show on amazon you yeah, know probably. Yeah, yeah. Because if they're watching, uh, you'd like to think they're going to say, yeah, we're going to keep green lighting that. You would hope. You would you hope. hope. Um, but uh, so talk a little bit about, so you, you go in and you, you did, how did this at, land at Apple? And I'm curious when you were talking to Apple about it, were you laying out this idea of how much do they want to know this is a five season show or you have ideas that can go for a long time? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they didn't, uh, I just kind of pitched the show to them. I mean, it, it happened because uh, Zach Van Amberg, who used to be head of, one of the heads of television at Sony Pictures, um, he and I had worked together for, for several years. He left and then took over the reins with uh, his partner, Jamie Ehrlich, to be the head of Apple TV+. And once he made that transition, Zach called me up and said, hey, come on over and uh, let, let's talk. And so I came over to his office and we were sitting and talking about the shows. And he said to me, do you remember that idea we had a few years ago about a show at NASA in the 70s? 
And, it, and I went, oh, my God, that's right, because he and I had had a casual conversation about NASA in the 70s. He grew up, uh, Skylab was like something he remembers as a kid, so it kind of imprinted on his brain. And there was a brief moment when we talked about doing a, a TV show set at NASA during that time period, and nothing ever came of it. So then when I was at his Apple office, he, and he said, remember that show? I said, yeah. He said, Let's, what if we did that? What if we did like a Mad Men in space set in the 70s? And I was like, wow, that's really kind of cool. Let me go think about it. So I went off and thought about it, and um, I thought immediately, well, you could absolutely do that show. You could do a straight-up character piece a la Mad Men that's like about the office politics and about the people who work at NASA at that time period. But to me, as a space aficionado, it's like a sad story because it's basically a time of budget cutbacks. It's a time when the lofty ambitions of NASA keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We're not going to Mars. We're not doing moon bases. We're not doing big space stations. We're just going to do the shuttle and a couple of little things here and there. And it's kind of depressing. And I said, what if we did the alternate history version and we did the space program that I thought we were going to get when I was a kid? What, you know, the, the space program that I was promised, you know, when I was watching Apollo, the glories of Apollo, and you were thinking about all these amazing things that were going to happen, that there was a road between here and Star Trek, and I was going to get to see a lot of that happen over the course of my lifetime, and that didn't come to pass. So it felt like there was an opportunity to do a series that was about that very idea and watch the space program become much bigger and watch how it you know changes the world and he totally bought into it he was like that's really cool and then it just became about you know well what would change and why would it change and then it was all about you know working out the story well so what i'm curious about is obviously you are you are you start at a certain point and then you start veering and i'm just curious as you guys have been developing the show how much are you sort of figuring out all those things that have now the new tree branch is growing that way and how all the things start going in a new direction. Yeah, I mean, one of the very first things I did is we were getting ready to put the writer, I was hiring the writers and then we were gonna have our first real sessions and I took some time and I sat down and I wrote up an original alternate timeline, just going from 1969 well into the future and just like what would be the changes I wanted to play and just wrote out a long timeline of all those alternate events. Some things would still take place, some things would happen differently or maybe happen later, but I wanted it to uh, to track coherently with the history that we know. I mean, I'm a history buff and a political buff, so I, w I tried to weave those events into the, into the timeline as best I could. Then as we started working out the series in the writer's room, we were constantly talking about changes to history and what would change and what would not change. What are the familiar names that would still be around and, and what were the names that would just disappear that wouldn't even be mentioned anymore? You know, one of the first things that came up was, okay, we're going to get out of Viet He's, we're getting out of Vietnam early. Nixon goes all in on the space program. Well, you got to get out of Vietnam because that's sucking resources and political capital and lives. And it's like that has to go away, which he wanted to get out of anyway. So he could pivot to the to the competition with the Soviet Union in space. Then you start saying, well, what happens to Nixon? And we said, I think Nixon. Well, the first domino to back up is the Russians land on the moon. Ted Kennedy doesn't go to Chappaquiddick as a result, because in real history, Chappaquiddick happened just like a week before the Apollo 11 moon landing. So in our in our timeline, because the Russians get there first, Kennedy goes back to Washington to attend congressional hearings to find out how we lost the moon. So he doesn't go to Chappaquiddick. Now he's a viable presidential candidate in 1972. And in 72, he's like the representative, the brother of the slain leader who put us on the space race to begin with and fights against Nixon in 72, and he wins. Then we started thinking, well, if, if Nixon loses in 72, what happens to Watergate? And we realized, well, there's probably, the Watergate break-in has happened, but the big scandal really doesn't break until after 72. So it never becomes this big thing. They never find the tape recording system. So Ted Kennedy's probably still using the tapes in his office and still recording conversations. Let's keep using that device. And Watergate never becomes a giant political thing. So, and it's just one piles on top of the other, piles on top of the other, and it becomes really fascinating and fun. One of the big losses of that whole storyline that Matt Wolpert pointed out was, well, then no one's ever going to make the movie All the President's Men, and what a tragedy What a tragedy that is. And I did feel like, oh, that kind of sucks. There's no All the President's Men in our, in our timeline. For people that are fans like me, um, can you sort of talk about where you're at in the development of season two? 
We, uh, yeah, we've shot season two, uh, almost all the episodes. When the COVID crisis happened, we uh, we still had two episodes to complete. So we have eight episodes pretty much in the can, and we've been working on post-production online ever since. We're starting to talk about uh, season three, and uh, we, we haven't opened the writer's room yet, but we're hope, hopeful that we will. Season two takes us, you know, uh, if you saw the very, the tag, the post credit sequence at the end of season one, you know, the season two takes us into 1983, 19, and it's uh, in the midst of the Cold War. It's gotten even more co colder. You know, Reagan is president, and the confrontation with the Soviet Union is front and center. So the second season is really a Cold War story about uh, the U.S. and the USSR. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, and for people that are watching right now, I really can't recommend uh, For All Mankind enough. It is uh, so well done, very grounded, um, and just... A really, really great show. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on and, and, and take care and uh, everybody be safe. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too.